Welcome back, everybody, to the FCS Prep Podcast. I am Dr. Keith, and this is where we experience real change right now. And so, guys, today, the topic of discussion is personal responsibility. And we're going to go into a little series on this. And so what is personal responsibility? I just I want to jump right in. Personal responsibility, you probably haven't heard it defined like this, but personal responsibility is power, freedom, and godhood. I'm going to say it again. Personal responsibility is power, freedom, and godhood. It is literally the ability to control your life, control the course of your life. How amazing, how powerful is that? When you think about that, you try to conceptualize that. That means that whatever path you take, it's all on you. You could choose to do and be whatever it is you want to do and whatever it is you want to be. That should excite us. That should get us like, oh my gosh, that's so exciting. It's so incredible. Yes, no matter what your circumstance, no matter what your situation, no matter where you are, no matter who you are, you have the power to control your life, but only if you start taking personal responsibility. And, and I also want to touch on this whole godhood thing, right? You know, and, and I'm not trying to be blasphemous or anything like that, but think about it. Someone who has complete and total power over their life through their decisions and their choices, through taking personal responsibility, that's kind of like a god, right? Gods, they do what they want to do, make they, decisions and they make things happen. If you can make decisions and make choices and make things happen in a way that you want them to happen, then that's godhood. And for those of you who believe in God and believe in Jesus Christ, you know, there are scriptures in there that talk about what he says. Doesn't the scripture say ye are gods? So I just want to put that out there. Like this is a very powerful thing, a very powerful concept that I really, really, really want you guys to grasp and understand that this is what comes with taking personal responsibility. It is literally the ability to change and control your life. It is power, freedom, and godhood. So what is the antithesis to personal responsibility? You know, what does it look like when we don't take personal responsibility? And that is what I like to deem uh, victim mentality or victimhood. I guess I'll just leave it at that. I don't want anyone to construe, construe my words, right? I know things have happened to people and horrible things have happened to people. So I don't want people to construe my words when I say victim mentality or victimhood and things like that. All right. Because what I'm talking about are those who make decisions to give their power away. Those who make decisions to not take personal responsibility. Those who make decisions to give up their power, their freedom, and their godhood. And they refuse to take personal responsibility for their beliefs, thoughts, feelings, and actions. They cast the blame on everybody else. You know, it's my mom's fault. It's my dad's fault. It's my sister's fault. It's my spouse's fault. It's my kid's fault. It's the job's fault. It's the system's fault. It's the government's fault. It's my past's fault. It's the future's fault. It's my present's fault. Like, the blame is always cast everywhere. And, and I, I believe the reason why people enter into this mode, because we almost like we're trained that taking personal responsibility is a bad thing, right? Because usually when people think about that and we talk about that, think about when you heard about personal responsibility. It's usually not in good terms. No one usually says, I took personal responsibility and made a million dollars. I took personal responsibility and, you know, healed my body or got in great shape or whatever usually it's not that usually it's someone messed up someone made a mistake someone royally screwed something up and then they say you need to take personal responsibility which is true we do when we make mistakes but the idea is that oh when you get you you take the blame you get the shame there there's rejection involved in that there's people looking at you in a bad way looking at you in a negative way and and, and we don't want to do we don't want to experience that right we don't want to experience the fact that dang i made him a decision that screwed everything up that screwed these people up so i don't want to take that so what the immediate thing i have to do is i got to blame somebody else this actually just came to me, but you look at the Bible and you look at Genesis when it talks about Adam and Eve. They didn't, no one took personal responsibility in that. Think about that. Nobody did. God came and talked to Adam. Adam said, hey, God, not my fault. It was Eve's fault. And then Eve said, hey, God, not my fault. It was the snake's fault. And the snake was just like, eh? right? But no one said, Adam didn't say, 
dang, yeah, you know what? I should have been watching out for my wife. You told me about that fruit. She told me where she got it from. I should have told her not to do it, God. I'm sorry. Eve didn't say, you know what, God? You told me you also about the fruit. I knew about the fruit. And, and on top of that, I listened to the snake, and I, and, 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 I, and I gave it to my husband. I knew I shouldn't have done that. I know I made a bad decision. My bad, God. I apologize. Can you please forgive us? But neither one of them took personal responsibility at all. They assumed the victimhood, that victim mentality, like, oh, she did it to me. The snake did it to me. That's what they did. They gave up. And listen, when I talk about godhood, Adam and Eve were literal gods on this planet. God gave them complete and total dominion over everything on the earth. Everything. Every plant, every animal, every mountain, every sea, everything. It was all theirs and they gave it all up because they refused to take personal responsibility and so that's what i'm talking about with that that this victim mentality with oh woe is me everything's happening to me everything is so bad it's everyone else's fault i can't change i'm stuck in this place i can't do anything oh my gosh because the moment we start saying no maybe this world we created in our head this condition we created this situation we created my financial situation that i created all these things maybe it's just the fact that it's me maybe it's my fault that i'm getting fired from the job because i'm showing up late maybe it's my fault because i'm Doing a crappy job. Maybe it's my fault in my marriage for starting all these fights because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. Maybe it's my fault with my kids because I'm not reading to them at night. Maybe it's my fault. And you know what, guys? I hope we can kill this stigma that just because we make a mistake, that makes us bad people. Because that's what happens. People don't want to take responsibility because you know what? They do, but they've been taught and trained that if I take personal responsibility, I'm a bad person. And bad people don't deserve love. Bad people aren't worthy. And therefore, bad people who can't change just become victims. We talked about all the, the three negative core beliefs in the other videos. So it's going to be a running theme and all the things we talk about. But it generates these, these beliefs in them. So they continue to basically build up these beliefs by refusing to take responsibility at anything. And so this is the, the victim mentality, the, the victimhood I'm talking about, right? That's what I'm talking about when, I, when I'm talking about victim mentality and victimhood. It's people who are literally choosing to give their power away out of fear, fear of what people may think about them, fear about how people may perceive them from then on out. That's the victim mentality. And that's so poisonous to personal responsibility and the power and the freedom and the godhood that we have a physical right to. So where did this idea even come from? Right? Where, where did I even come up with this topic? And the thing is, I didn't read it in a book. I didn't get it from a class or anything like that. I was actually reading revelations in the Bible. All right? I was reading it and I, the thought came to me right, about the, the great white throne judgment. And just stick with me. Even if you're not a believer, just stick with me. Because I'm, I'm going to get to the other stuff too, right? If, if you're not a believer, the secular stuff, I'm going to get to that. But just stick with me for a moment. And I thought about it. And I thought about it at the end of the day, when we stand before Jesus Christ, and he's on the throne, and he's judging us, there is nobody we can blame. Nobody for anything we've done. We can't blame mom. We can't blame dad. We can't blame the society or the system or history. We, there's nobody and nothing we can blame. It is all on us. He will show us every thought, every belief, every feeling, every action, every interaction, either in person and online. So if you're online dogging people out, thinking you're safe behind a screen, you will be held accountable for that. Every single thing we do, we will have to answer for everything. And so I'm like, holy crap. So if at the end, I have to answer for everything, then doesn't that essentially mean I better start answering for things now? Start taking control now? Start doing what I'm supposed to do now? I'm like, oh man. And it just kind of, it just kind of, blew my mind i was like wow i get it now it makes sense because if i have to take responsibility then then i might as well start taking responsibility now and start making good choices because when i stand before god i can't blame my wife or my kids or, or or society or the job or a boss or a friend i can't blame anybody for any choice or decision i make because i have that power by taking personal responsibility i have the power to control any choice any thought any action any belief i have i have that power therefore anything i do is on 
me, regardless of what anybody else in the world does. So then it just hit me. I'm like, oh my gosh, people need to know this. People need to know this. They need to know that taking personal responsibility is not a bad thing. It's a great thing. It's an empowering thing. It's a freeing thing. It's a powerful thing. It's not about blame or rejection or abandonment or anything like that. It's phenomenal. And here's the, little, the, the secret. People like when you take personal responsibility for the mistakes you make. They hate when you blame everything on other people. They hate it. So if it's in your marriage or at work or whatever, they would prefer you say, hey, I made a mistake. My bad. I should have made that call. I should have turned that assignment on time. I should have been here on time. They love that. They can work with that. But they can't work with someone who makes excuses for every single thing they do and never take personal responsibility. And chances are people who don't take personal responsibility tend not to be very productive in any area of their life. Just put that out there. But in any case, especially interpersonal relationships. As I'm going through this, right, as I'm developing this thought, then I start thinking about circumstances. Because we all know, we're, everyone watching this, we all come from different walks of life. Oh, do we have some similarities? Yes. But we all come from different walks of life and different experiences and different variations on some of the same stories, right? That we've heard. But what I realize is, back to the white throne judgment, the circumstance doesn't matter either. I started thinking about that like, okay, maybe you didn't come up in a wealthy household or maybe you didn't come up in the best country or maybe you didn't come up in the best whatever, society, whatever. But I can only imagine that God would show you if we had the nerve to speak up and talk during that time that God could show us thousands if not millions of other people who had the same situation as us or very similar or worse and still made better decisions than we did I, I, I can guarantee it because you know what you, we can do that right now we can literally do that right now there are people that we know or have seen or experienced or watch on YouTube or any other platform that have come from a whole lot worse than we have and had a whole lot less than we had and have done incredible and phenomenal things incredible and phenomenal things so then well, that came to me it's like circumstances don't matter then doesn't matter what my circumstance is. Doesn't matter what my marriage is like. Doesn't matter what my kids are like. Doesn't matter what, where I live. Doesn't matter what society I'm in. None of that stuff matters. I still have the power. I still have the power to make a decision and make a choice and make the right choice that's going to guide my life and give me the power, freedom, and godhood that has is been given to me. That is my God-given right. And so, and like I said, everybody. Like I said, stick with me, right? So you look into like the secular world, right? You look into like the kind of, you think about the rags to riches stories. These people come from nothing and then they get everything, you know? And I listen to a lot of the motivational gurus and I listen to the Tony Robbins and the Dr. Eric Thomas and the Inky Johnson and, and the Ed Milet and, and all these people, all these gurus, right? Who've been studying it, Brendan Bouchard. They've been studying it for years and years and years and years. And there are countless stories they tell about people who came from nothing and achieved everything everything people in worse situations than most of us achieving so much doing so much people who've lost both parents in their lives people who've grown up sick you know um I, the guy's name escapes me right now but there's a motivational speaker who has no arms and no legs and he's extremely successful most of us have arms and legs and can't hold a candle to this guy circumstance so i'm saying the circumstances don't matter when it comes to taking personal responsibility, it does not. And so that's, like I said, that those are some things that have just been evident that I've seen, whether with God or in the world, where personal responsibility, it, it works both ways. Whether you believe in God, whether you don't believe in God, it doesn't matter. The concept itself works. You have the ability to change the very course of your life. That, again, that should excite you. No matter where you are, no matter how bad you are, no matter what conditions you have, you have the power right now to change the very course of your life. What the people put on you, the labels they put on you, the life they condemned you to, said you're never going to be nothing. You'll never make it. You have the power to prove all those people wrong. The people who said you'll never be lovable, you'll never be worthy, you're helpless, you're a victim. Listen, you have the power to prove all of those people wrong all of them every single one you have the power to prove them wrong and so 
how do I want to finish this up? I want to go into a few personal testimonies of mine. I want to touch on, for one, my marriage. I want to touch on my kids. I want to touch on my work and with the schools. And I want to touch on my private practice. All right. So the first thing I'm going to touch on is my marriage. So in my marriage, it was really rough in the beginning, right? Really, really rough in the beginning. It was a lot of finger pointing, you know. Well, she was just nicer. If she did this or if he did that. And just finger pointing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And nothing got better. We had ceasefires. There was never any resolution. Never really any peace. Really just ceasefires for a very, very long time. We've been married for 16 years. We've been together for 17. So for a while, it was not good. And then I started to stop and just start taking personal responsibility. Right. And it was kind of a slow process, but start taking personal responsibility instead of just pointing fingers and being like, well, I change when she changes. You know, I'll do right when she does right. You know, she's always, you know, yelling or mean or whatever. And so then, you know, I'm not going to do anything right. For, I'm like, no, no. I gotta start taking personal responsibility for the things that I'm saying, the things that I'm doing, my, not the state that I'm in. Now listen, there have been times when my wife would ask me a question and I would immediately become defensive, like ready to fight. Well, I'm talking about like everything. It was like a complete shift, right? Think of Transformers and they just change from, you know, the car to the, the, the standing robot. That's kind of like what it was. It was complete shift in my tone, my breathing, my mindset, everything. And it was like, I was just ready to, so I had to start recognizing that and changing that and realize that, hey, just because she asked a question doesn't mean it's going to be a fight, right? As a matter of fact, you know, why does anything have to be a fight? Then I started controlling what I'm saying, controlling what I'm doing, controlling what I'm thinking and everything like that. And let me also just preface this. I'm not saying that all of a sudden I started this, I started kowtowing and everything like that and we wouldn't have a conversation. It wasn't anything like that. What I'm saying is I started managing myself because I can't control her, but I can't control me. So that's what I started to do. And I started to manage myself. Know what I'd said, what I would do, what I would believe about her. All these things I started to change and that started to improve our marriage without her doing anything. And that does not mean she's perfect. I'm just giving you an example of what happens when you take personal responsibility and how powerful that can be. Just one person in this situation taking personal responsibility started to improve the relationship it started to improve the marriage so that's one example the next example was with my kids again there's no handbook on how to raise kids so i kind of took some pages from my dad and just started going from there and then i was kind of treating them all the same but you quickly learn as a parent that your children are not the same they're, they're all different all your kids are different. They, they have different love languages, different likes, different dislikes, all this, all that stuff. So it's not, oh, I had one and I can have the rest of them and just do them all the same. No, it's starting over every single time. It's a brand new person every single time. And so the reason I say all this is because, like I said, I always had this one template. Everyone's a nail. I'm a hammer. Bop, 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 bop. Right? That's the way it was. But that was not working my children were shutting down they weren't talking they weren't open up about things everything was fine good fine good and then you you have this you know and and this is just a sign yeah parents always say you hear people say oh you know oh they're just being a teenager they're just being moody they're just being this they're just being that and i'm like I don't believe that. I don't believe that they're just being moody. I don't believe that that's just how they are just because they hit a certain age. I don't believe that. I just don't. What I do believe, though, is taking personal responsibility. So you know what? That's exactly what I did. I changed how I was with my kids. Instead of treating them all the same, I started recognizing them for who they are, individuals. When I saw how my son was scared to speak up because he's scared of the retaliation that could possibly happen, I had to change my approach. I reviewed how I raised my daughter and I had to give her a call and apologize for my lack of parenting or or, or the, the quality of the parenting more so. It wasn't like I was a jerk or an a-hole or anything like that. It was just that I didn't do right by her because I just didn't know. And side note, that's not an excuse. I didn't know is not an excuse. So I called her and I apologized to her for what I didn't do. And so I tried to change that. I started changing how I talk to her, how I respond to her, right? Do the same thing with my third, my third child and my fourth child, right? My two boys. I had to change my approach and would, lo and behold, would you believe that they started opening up? Would, lo and behold, would you believe we started having good conversations? Lo and behold, would you believe things started to change? Our relationship started to to change not because of them not because of them but because of me 
I took personal responsibility. Let's go to work, right? So now it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm like, man, it worked my marriage, it's working with my kids, let's try it at work. So I go to work, right? I go and use a perfect example from 2020 when we came back, oh, I'm sorry, it was 2021. We just came back to school from the pandemic and I was over lunch duty. And these kids were, for lack of better words, they were kind of out of control. <laughs> That's a lack of better words, right? And on top of that, we were outside in a courtyard where there were all these, the glass was everywhere, so everybody could see. So not only were they out of control, but it was a, everybody could see my mistakes and my failures, and my lack of lunchroom management, right? It, it was embarrassing at first. And what I could have done was said, oh, those kids are bad. You know, it's them. They're so disrespectful. They're not listening to me. They just won't listen. They're just bad kids. I did not do that. I said, what can I do to make the situation better? I, it was on me. It was on me. It's not on them. It's on me. Kids will work with whatever structure you give them. I gave them none, so it's on me. So you know what I started doing? I started making a little adjustments. Move this seat around, move that seat around, get a little bit of additional help in there, play a game in the middle uh, towards the end of lunch, make sure I give out incentives for like um, little like starbursts or whatnot for the kids doing the right thing. Guess what? Guess what? Lo and behold, no more out of control lunchroom. And all the kids are doing what they're doing. They're, they're having a great time. They're enjoying themselves. Uh, my coworker was going, it was helping me out. Like, it was great. It was great. Why? Because I took personal responsibility. Instead of blaming them, I said, it's on me. What do I got to do to make this better? That was my power. That was my freedom. That was my godhood I was putting into practice, right? That's what it is. And the last example was my private practice, right? FCS consultant, uh, Faircliff Consultant Services, right? I would meet with the clients. And yes, I understand. And you understand therapy, yes. I understand the change comes from the client and the client has made the change and everything like that. But that does not get me off the hook. It doesn't let me off the hook. I still gotta be a qualified and a, and a good practitioner. I still gotta give the people something to work with. And so you know what I would do? I would review each session. Okay, how'd that go? Could I have said this? Could I have done that? Could I give him this resource? Could I give him that resource? I'm literally self-reflecting on the session. How can I do it better? How can I provide a better service? How can I help this person better? And guess what? My skills improved. They improved because I'm looking at myself and how I can do things better. I'm taking personal responsibility. I'm not blaming anybody else. It's not, oh, they're just, they just never work. Or they never listen. They never do this. They never do that. No, I'm taking personal responsibility and it's making me better so I can be better for those people that I serve that's what it's all about that's my power my power it's I'm controlling my life the very course of it and I can go and do whatever I want to do but I have to first take personal responsibility so there's a lot of other examples I can give you guys right about taking personal responsibility over my health and how I lost the 40 plus pounds, 40, 50 pounds in 2021. Um, you know, I, I could talk to you guys about uh, uh, my time management. I could talk to you about organization. I could talk to you about all these things. Taking this personal responsibility where I made mistakes and when I've improved, I can, I can talk to you all about it. But guys, the take home message is this isn't just for me. This is for everybody. Every single one of you has been given the God given right, the God given right right for power freedom and godhood all have been given that right but in order to access it you have to take personal responsibility you have to you have to it's critical critical it's a must it's got to happen your life cannot change until you do it cannot change until you do because no one can do it for you nobody you have to do it for yourself got to so guys, I hope this has been helpful. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this, you know, foray into personal responsibility. And we're going to talk about it. You know, I, I like to have a lot of application, right? But this is an intro, right? So there's not really a lot of application in here. But I've already broken it down into how to go about taking personal responsibility. Uh, I'm working on some of those things now. Um, so those are going to be coming up in the next videos. The next video, though is like i told you before the next video is going to be an interview with my cousin zahari and williams come up zo so y'all stay tuned to that we're going to be talking about all types of stuff y'all just stay tuned it's going to be touching in it's going to be
going to be touching on personal responsibility. He's going to touch on unconditional love. It's going to be touching on how he's made it from where he was to where he is now. Right. So it's going to be great. It's going to be interview. It's going to be phenomenal. So y'all stay tuned for that. Until then, guys. Hey, listen, I love you all. You guys are awesome. Thank you for always coming back. Share this with someone you think might help them, might bless their lives. You all take care. Have a great, awesome and blessed day. And I will see you all soon.